So let's start. Let's continue. Um, I think you can hear me, right? Yes, you can hear me. So what I was talking about is the shape of the distribution. There are different methods. We will learn that how the different methods are. If you are really like into these concepts, to learn this concept, um, you can seek it from the fifth lecture of statistics, like last week's statistic lectures or uh, last last week's statistics class lecture. If you have friends and who are taking like statistics, or if you are taking as well the statistics course, then you know that what I'm talking about. Um, so. Yeah, histogram and how did it's that lecture is like in detail that how we calculate how we uh, yeah calculate the frequency distribution um, from any data points um, and then to draw the histogram. Histogram basically is giving us the shape of the data uh, which is distributed over the uh, range. We will learn a little bit of these topics today and mostly. You can I can refer those lecture notes with you, I, or I can share. I also have videos, but there is a, some problem of uploading those videos. Stem and leaf plot, our statistical concepts are there. But at this moment, um, it's uh, important to understand the concept of discrete and continuous variable. Because these two variables you're gonna learn, you're gonna talk about mostly, and especially continuous in finance, because interest rate, policy rate is policy rate, or we can also call discount rate, or we can also call interest rate in finance. It is continuous, so you're gonna deal about with interest rate in later on chapters. So it's really important to understand this concept. So again, I'm telling you that this chapter two is really important to make your basis or uh, to clarify your concept. Because later on, we will not go into details about this concept because uh, you have already learned. So you are assumed to learn from uh, this concept in this chapter and to do. That's why I'm giving it more time. So. Discre what is discrete? You know, the whole number, that's discrete. If I'm talking about one and the other number is two and then three, this discrete, right? But there is also like numbers between one and two, like 1.1, 1.11 and so on to make it until two. So there are a lot of numbers between one and two and that makes all these numbers continuous. So it's a continuous number and the other one is discrete number. So that's the simple basic definition. But um, let's take another example, the sum of dice, two dice, can only be between two and 12. Um, let's have a look on the Excel. I have to discard that and I have to open the Excel form. Um, I just did it on in here. So if I have two dices, you know dice, uh, die. So this is the die, right, which has this number which you also play, like say it's a cubical form. I don't have right now with me, but anyway, I have to take this away. And this, uh, so if I roll, read the form. No, 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 not, not this one. Uh, I just did it. Where is that?
Anyway, we can make a new one. So I have to move you here. So let's say I have a I have a dice which has an outcome of one, two. So there's a one dice, and it has an outcome of uh, it can possibly six have six outcomes, and then there we have another dice. So So it can also have six outcomes. Altogether, there will be 36 outcomes if I roll two dices together. So one, I can have uh, first, I, there's a chance that I can have one, one, right? And then there are certain chances. And then I have like uh, some is like two, three. So if I extend this, it can give us this matrices. So I can also use this in the same way. Two, one, three, um, three, one, which gives us four. So one is sum and the other one is the outcome that what you can see. Um, Four, one, you can say four, five, one, five, oh, sorry, six, and that's five, and that's the sixth one. So there are different outcomes, total outcomes, 36. If I extend this one, so I will get this kind of way. So these are the total outcomes. So if you count, it's like total will be 36. So don't count this one. And don't count this one. This one we need to count. And there are total 36 outcomes. So the minimum possible outcome is 2. And which is the sum can be 2. And the maximum outcome can be 6 and 6, which can be 12. So all the numbers, the probability of each possible sum is occurring between these two extreme points. Understand? Now we can draw it. How? If I ask you, let's say A, they, we can assign the probabilities. So let's say A is a sum of two dices equals four. So what is the probability of A? We know the likelihood. What is the chances of occurring A? Probability of A. Can you guess? So the chances of occurring means the sum of two dices must be equal to four. So we can see the sum here. So it's four, it's four, it's four. We know that uh, N is 36 right so we have three outcomes certain outcomes one three two two and three one so we have three out these three outcomes and three one which gives us the sum of both dice is four so it means the probability will be Four, oh, sorry, three by thirty-six, zero point zero eight three, almost one, zero point one. So that's the percentage chances. There are eight percent chances that if I roll two dice, I will get 
the two numbers which can give me the sum of four. So you can bet on me. You can I means I can based on the probability. I'm not gonna I'm go, I'm not gonna put a bet on this because there's like really less chances. Um, but how many chances of they are there to have seven if the sum is seven? So let's see. This is uh, B. And the probability, sum of two probabilities equal to seven. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So N is 36, probability of B will be six by 36, all right? 6 by 36. That's it. Yes, so there are 16% chances, almost 17% chances that I can have some equal to 7 of 2 dice. So I still I'm not going to bet. It depends. If I'm risk lower, I will bet. So if we see the C, and C means that at least, at least, there is a one, the, the at least one die shows five, right? At least one dice, if I roll two dice, so there must be at least one dice which can show me uh, the five. So you can see from the table, so now probability of C, so we have to see that how many outcomes are there? So which shows five? So this is five, five, five. Yeah, it's one. At least one dice is showing five. Yes, that's right. So I will just give it a different color, so that we know that we. Had, and this is also five. So here also one. At least one dice is showing five. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So how many numbers? One six is here, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the probability is eleven by thirty. So that means every chance. So this is a thirty percent chances that I will have like five on one dice. And if I do um one, so there is like six here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, five again, eleven. So that's how we calculate, we do with a discrete form. And it also shows a symmetric behavior. Symmetric means two equal sides. Uh, symmetric behavior. So if you see the diagonal, right, two, I have three here, three as well here. So four, I have four here, four here. Five, five, five here, five here. So it's giving us me, like, um, I will show you on the, here on here because I cannot draw there in Excel. So this is how we do discrete. Remember that probability. If we calculate all the probabilities of all these outcomes, it give and make a sum. The sum should be equal to one. So probability lies from zero to one. We can say that, right? So what I'm talking exactly, if I draw, this is the symmetric distribution. So if I divide it from the middle, this half is equal to this half. This is A equal to B. Right, so this is symmetric. Um, and uh, when I'm talking about the probability, it should lie, oops. Why is like this?
Yeah, 0 to 1. So area under this curve is 1. And exactly in the middle is the mean, our average expected value of y. If it's a y series, then it's the expected value of y. These shapes can be different. It can be skewed. That is positive and negative. But in economics, as uh, I told before, that mostly we deal with the symmetric distribution, which is also known as normal distribution. So, normal distribution is another name of symmetric distribution. What, now, what is normal distribution? That we will uh, talk in the next slide. But for now, uh, this kind of a distribution, which is equal, is known as symmetric or normal distribution. In finance, we deal mostly, as I told you, mostly with the continuous way. So that now you understood about the discrete because we also have done the example. So in finance, mostly we deal with the continuous random variable, as I told you about just like interest rate, mainly interest rate, which you're going to deal a lot. So we need a probability density function. So for continuous variable, uh, we're going to talk about the probability density function. In discrete, we already understood the dice example. But for continuous, let's understand the rainfall. Now, uh, for a moment, the normal distribution requires mean and variance so that's when we make it any distribution and when we have like a mean which is ey which is can be shown as mu and variance sigma square or variance of x that's known as normal distribution so any distribution which carries the mean mu uh, which you can have like a, what is the central tendencies we will talk about different forms of central tendencies later on um so at the moment um just hold this concept uh, and for like any distribution which carries mean and variance is known as a uh, normal distribution. About the discrete, we already uh, clarify with the um, example. Now let's talk about the rainfall example. And for that, I'm going to take you to the whiteboard. Can you see my camera? No, you cannot. Oh, yeah, because it's shared. Okay. Now you can see. So, hmm. Now, let's say an example of a continuous random variable. So if y is a random variable which shows the rainfall. Now, rainfall can be done, calculated, measured in millimeter, millimeters or inches. Let's take inches, right? Because it's easy to, with, with milliliter, for example, we can have like two milliliter to 200 milliliters or 300 milliliters. So let's talk about inches, like two inches or three inches. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so what I'm saying is that if we have um, Y, a random variable showing the exact amount of rain, which means two inches, is it possible? Well, logically, it's not possible, right? But mathematically, it can be possible. So it means that um, the probability is we know the 100 percent, right? Exactly the same number. But rainfall, it means it's exactly the two. It's not 2.0000001. It's not 1.9999999. So if this is the case, the probability is really hard to calculate, right? 
because it's not the possible. Then how to do that? So logically, the probability of exactly two is probability of y having two is zero, right? Because it's it's not possible. So what we can do, we can say that there is a possibility that y can be lying between a range. So here we define range, as I told you, there is a one and two, and between one and two, there are so many numbers. So right, we can say the rainfall can lie between 1.8 and 2.2 .2. example so now i have a range let me make a diagram to clarify so this is the range of the probability we have to find out the probability of y given that uh, 1.8 y is less than 2.2 .2. so it means we have a range we have an interval we don't have exact number right so this is not possible in continuous so it shows that we now we have we are dealing with a continuous random variable which is y here as a mere of rainfall now if we I draw a diagram, just random diagram, let's say I have a symmetrical distribution and this is exactly two, which is not possible. So I draw a range, which is like 1.8, this is X, which is rainfall. And rainfall can be like one, two, three inches, right? One, and this is the function with the highest point of point, let's say point eight, all right? So two at two, it's give the function of x is giving us point eight inches, um, but I cannot because it's a continuous. So I draw a range two point two. So what is this? One point eight is x one, and two point two. What is two point two? X one plus change in x1 do you understand so i have this interval to find out the probability what is the probability in this interval uh, now we need to know the area between this interval so it means uh, i can use integral we have learned differentials and opposite of differential is integral just a simple like integral of x is x care by 2 a and b then I use A and B. You have, must have learned integrals as well in your calculus if you have done it. So I can say lower limit and upper limit, x1 plus delta x and function of, let's say if this is, if I call it function of x, so function of x dx. So by solving this, I can get the probability function for this, uh, way here i have x1 is 1.8 and this one is 2.2 we will see later on what is the main function how we build a function in continuous just in a moment after but this you need to understand that this is the range this is the interval and we have to find out the probability that the outcome the rainfall the outcome of a rainfall must lie between this range um, then it's known as a continuous random variable. For a moment, hold it uh, here and let's go to normal distribution. So this is, I'm just uh, raising it and I will come to the rainfall example later on. But you should know some properties of random uh, normal distribution. So because let's say if y is a normal distributed uh, very random variable so it must have a mean it has a sample size n with the mean mu and sigma square that's we know so every y is normally distributed with mean mu 
we call it mu and variance sigma square. In this case, if we it, if we have a distribution like this, so it's mean it's normally distributed with mean b mu plus a b sigma square. So if the way if the series is given, a and b are given, you can find out the mu. So in this case, mu will be the b mu. So the b times the mu of that distribution, of the y distribution. So we can have the expected value of y equal to mu, uh, which is sum of y upon n, and then multiply it with b. That's this amount. And similarly, sigma square, you can get sum of y minus y square upon n, right? Where a and b are any scalar, scalar number, scalars. And its probability density function, function of y, because we're talking about this y, function of y, now here, this is, this we get the normal distribution, uh, probability density function, also known as, so I'm talking about not probability distribution, probability density. You know density, what is density? So density, density apparently means that how dense is some space, how dense is the series, how like differ from one point to another point. So if, if this is the data point, right, if this is the data point, it's really dense. If this is the data point, it's scattered, it's less dense than that. So here I have, here I have to find out the probability of one event. Here, it will be different than probability of this event here because the density is different. So density means in one area, how many people, for example, in one area, how many people live in that area, it's known as population density. So density always uh, refer to the numbers. So probability density function of this distribution, also known as PDF, is a 1.2. Point two pi is given for any probability distribution which is continuous random variable is e minus y minus mu square by two sigma square. So this is the main formula which you will also use to find out the probability. Now we will implement the same this thing in the in the you can also put in a rain example. But before that, we need to calculate uh, the community uh, cumulative frequency density distribution. So now you know why is a random variable with distributed normally with mean mu and sigma square, and why is a random variable with the probability density function of this formula, 2 pi sigma. Understood? If we put different values for y, we will get normally distributed. So here, you can put any different values, 1, 2, 3, any variable. You can have different values for function of y. And then if you plot, it gives you different value. Do you understand? Same thing what we do, what we did in a uh, dice. So we can gather the dice distribution and we can plot the distribution and it gives us the normal distribution in discrete form. So here it's a continuous. So uh, hope you understood, right? There is another concept uh, that's known as z-score. Z-score are standardized, normally distributed variable. Because usually variable is not standardized. So when we standardize, it means we exactly find out the difference of one value, then it's mean. So it's mean. I'm going to erase this, okay? So for y, any y random variable, continuous random variable, remember this, it's normally distributed with mean mu and sigma square, and the probability density function is given as this much. Now, z. 
z is a standardized normally distributed variable and it's given as value of course the variation from its mean upon sigma which is normally distribution with mean zero and one so variance is one mu is zero in this case is normally distributed with mean zero and variance sigma square one so from previous example of the rainfall the pdf between 1.9 and 2.0 can get by putting the values of y 1.9 in so now you understood like normally distributed right now we come back with the we created the probability density uh, density function which is fy 1 upon 2 pi this we know this is given e minus y minus mu square upon 2 sigma square now we have this function, so we can draw this. I'm just putting the charger. Uh, yeah, so this one and we I told you I have like 1.8 and 2.2 So after solving the integral inside you can just put the value of 1.8 and 2.2 to get the exact probability distribution density function for rainfall Let's do another example, but before that you must know the difference uh, will be the solution. We know the pr probability exactly lies between 0 and 1, right? In this case, why this mean is 0 and this is variance is 1. So probability of exact number, which is a mu if it's two in the example of rainfall it's two so probability of this is zero so we say normally distributed with mean zero the same rainfall example so here you can either use probability of rainfall less than 2.2 which you can also rewrite in probability of minus infinity to y and less than 2.2 can I write this? Yes, I can write this. So here, it will be minus infinity. So now, because I have this function, so there can be different function. So this one is between 1.8 and 2.2. This one is less than. And similarly, you can say probability of y greater than 1.8, because 2 lies here. So in that, in that case, it will be 1.8, and here it will be infinity. Now, let's uh, understand this phenomena. Because for this, we need a cumulative density function. Let's talk about cumulative density function. That what is it? Exa what exactly is it? Okay. I think this, uh, this example uh, is easier for you to understand. But first, cumulative, just like probability des density function, we also calculate density function as from the name cumulative so here you add up you add up in that function so from the definition it's you can define the function where the probability of any given range you need to find that's cumulative for for example there is a series of y in our example, y is less than y1, which means 2 is less than 2.2, right? But I'm not writing here 2 and 2.2. So what is the probability of y is less than y1? So you can define a function, function of y1, 
of probability of y less than y1 is in the range of minus infinity less than y less than y1 not equal less so now we need to find the integral and that will be y uh, so because it's minus infinity y1 and function of y dy now let's understand if fy is given as 6 underscore y minus y this is a function whereas 0 is less than y is less than 1 so probability lies somewhere between 0 and 1 of this function so how to calculate and it's a is a, this function is a probability density function of a continuous random variable because here we have a range so it's obvious that we are it's a continuous random variable understand now if i ask you to calculate cumulative density function or cdf so how are you going to calculate this cdf simple as i told you you have to calculate the integral and in that case you have uh, okay i'm gonna erase this this part so i already have the function so let's say i define a function of f y1 another function which is y is less than equal to y1 uh, less than y1 with the given probability 0 of y and 1 that's for sure now we need to find out the integral in this case we know that it's uh, 0 and y1 f of y dy so I can say 0 y1, I can put this function inside, 6 underscore y minus y dy. Can I write this in this form? x, I take 6 here, and x, uh, sorry, y. 1 by 2 minus y. I can write in this way. So now open the integral. So when I open the integral, I can get 6 y 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 upon 1 by 2 plus 1 minus This is uh, y 1 plus 1, 2 upon 2. And I have the range 0 and y 1. So solving this, I can get 6 and 3 by 2. So it will be 2 by 3 into y 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 into y square 0 and y 1. So now I open this integral range and I can put here, which can, if I put, uh, which can give me like this. So first I put 2 by 3, instead of y, I put upper range, which is y1, 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2, y1 square, right? And then I will put 0. So when I put 0 here instead of y and here, it will give me 0, right? So no need to put that. Open the bracket 3, 2, 2, 2, 4. y1, 3 by 2 minus 3 y1 square. Right? So from here, this is our cumulative frequency distribution. So we can say function of y1 that's a cumulative 
density function is 4 y1 3 by 2 minus 3 y1 square. I get this if the probability lies of y1. If it's greater than 0, if it's uh, less than 0, this will give me 0. Y. If y is uh, greater than 0, it's also 0. So the probability must lie between 0 and 1. Sorry, it's 1. If it's uh, greater, uh, less than 0, it's 0. If it's greater than 1, it's 0. So this is my cumulative. So that's how you can find out any cumulative uh, density function if your probability density function is given. Uh, now, it has a lot of application. For example, we need to find out the median. What is the median? In this case, uh, we equate CDF into half. Um, and then there will there is also central limit theorem. Uh, what is central limit theorem? Central limit theorem means it states like y is a series, is a normally distributed series. Then positive uh, mean is mu and variance is sigma square upon n. So if y is any series, so mu mean is mu. And variance is not sigma square, but variance is sigma square upon n. So it means means if we increase the population, if we increase the size, if we increase the number, that's the central limit theorem. So the mean will converge to mu. So if it's really big number, so there is a possibility that expected value of y is approximately equal to mu. Uh, there is a less error. So the bigger this is, the overall variance will be less, less, and less. The overall error will be less. Right? Understand? So let me share the screen now. For the last 10 minutes. So that you understand. So now you know what is the difference between a discrete and the continuous variable, random variable. And we have solved this through different examples. Um, yeah, we know the symmetric, normal distribution, probability density function, understand from the dice example is the same thing uh, we learn about the probability as i told you properties of normal distribution uh, mean mu and variance sigma square so why i didn't find this thing sim simple like uh, this notation so i put it here double uh, mu sigma square these are the properties that the probability density functions and uh, standardized normal distribution is you know why it's zero and why it's one um, Cumulative function, distribution function, we took an example, central limit theorem, then the increase, if we increase the n, the mean will tend towards mu, and variance will tend to, towards sigma square upon n. And it's re becoming really less. Uh, there are other distributions, uh, chi-square distribution, binomial distribution. We will learn, uh, we will talk about a little about all this, but during the estimation, during the linear regression models. Uh, Poisson distribution is more statistical concept, so, but this one is really important. T distribution is really important. F distribution is really important. F distribution is for chi-square as well and exponential distribution. So these three are important, student T distribution, F distribution, and chi-square distribution. We will learn through different examples. Um, so next uh, class, uh, means the day after tomorrow, we're gonna talk about different uh, descriptive analysis of qualitative, and then we will end this uh, chapter with a quiz. So next class, in last 30 minutes, there will be a quiz, 
and first one hour I will talk about the different ways of descriptive distribution and more mainly I'm going to talk about the central tendencies the concept of mean median mode geometric mean harmonic means these are not well um, used but mean and geometric means are used and then we going to talk mostly about how to get the quartile but how to measure the variation so measure the central tendencies so next class we're going to talk about measuring the central tendencies and measuring the variation uh, we will also take the example um, and then uh, we will have 30 minutes quiz of or 15 minutes quiz we will see how we, means how long we can take the quiz uh, but mostly, usually it's going to be like, uh, I think, three to four questions, um, which is like, if you know it, it can finish in like 15, 10 to 15 minutes. If you, of course, if you don't know. So the, uh, there is a teacher assistant for this course. And um, let me tell you who is the teacher assistant. Uh, so he's going to, or she's going to arrange the quiz in last 30 minutes and today today she or he didn't come um, okay so her name is um, I already gave her I probably her right Roni so she's Roni and probably she's gonna join this group as well right now she she's a master student so she's gonna help me in arranging different um, formats also like um, if you don't understand you can also ask her questions um, she also she will she will also arrange like a session for e-views probably so I'm gonna have a meeting with her this week um, and then next from next week uh, I will tell her I will uh, instruct her that how she gonna go for further with the e-views